thank you very much to listen in to this podcast. I'm delighted to be here with Matt Clay, who is a Dementia Friends Ambassador for the Alzheimer's Society. Hello, Matt. Hello, Sheila. How are you? I'm very well. How are you doing? I'm very well. Good to be here. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. And folks, I'm Sheila McMahon. For those of you who don't know me, and I am a qualified registered counsellor. So getting stuck in today, we're going to be talking about dementia. It affects so many people, doesn't it, Matt? It certainly does, yeah. Um, Part of my role as Dementia Friends Ambassador is delivering Dementia Friends sessions. And one of the things that we talk about in the in the Dementia Friends session is, you know, one in 14 people over, um, I think it's over 65, um, are living with dementia or can be affected with dementia. So it's it affects lots of people. And, and part of this role and other roles that I do, everybody I speak to, they say, yes, I know somebody. Oh, yes, I know somebody. I know somebody. It's it's really really prevalent so it's really important to talk about it and raise awareness in a in a positive way yeah absolutely Matt. and the thing is like we're both coming from a place where we don't see ourselves as the expert a person i don't believe anybody is the expert in anything but that's my personal opinion but look we're here to kind of share our experiences in the hope that it might help other people um, so, Matt, how come you got, in, you know, interested in dementia? What's been your experience of it? If you don't like asking, of course. Of, of course, that's fine, Sheila. Um, so it's it's a, a long, long association, I suppose, I've, I've had with with dementia in that my mum um, uh, is a re- now retired, but she was a nurse and she worked for most of her career with people living with dementia and various other mental health conditions. Um, at in Derby, where where I'm from, um, as and so I was always sort of around around. She would she wouldn't talk too much about work, but I'd sometimes go in and visit her at work. I used to quite like going to see her at work. You know, it was like actually, yeah, yeah. When I was when I was a kid, and you know, just just the I think it was the environment of care. Everybody was caring, looking after people. It was that in that really sort of welcoming, friendly environment. Obviously, it was very difficult in some respects you know you were seeing some people who were very poorly but um i don't think i I remember going as quite a young person so i don't think my mum would have let me see some of the really you know quite quite sad Mm -hmm. sad situations and then as i got older my auntie who is my dad's sister um she uh she was diagnosed with alzheimer's disease i'd say probably in the early 2000s Mm-hmm. And she lived with that for for many years until she was uh, moved into a, a home, and then she passed away uh, a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. And if, during that time is when I really started to think I really want to help make a difference here. Um, I'd attended a dementia friend session through my my job and been on the other side uh, two or three times. It's something that you can you can. There's lots of opportunities to attend dementia friend sessions, wow. um, and then uh, at the Garrick, Litchfield Garrick, which is where mm. where my day job is. That's where I work. Mm. Um, we were looking into developing some dementia friendly activities here, such as dementia friendly film screenings, um, and we were involved in the start of what used to be called the Dementia Friendly Alliance, um, but it's Dementia Friendly Communities. It's what it's now now known as for Litchfield. So I, I became involved in that working group, which I still am, and that's still still going. Um, and through that is where I, I thought, well, I want to be, it was called at that point, a Dementia Friends Champion, mm-hmm. is the, the person delivering the Dementia Friends sessions, basically. Mm-hmm. And a Dementia Friends session is a really straightforward 45 minutes information session where you learn about dementia. So, um, and that's now become... Nice. As you're mentioning that, if let's say somebody nesting would like to attend one of those Dementia Friends sessions, how would you talk about that? Um, so the first thing to do is go on the Dementia Friends website, um, or there's plenty of Dementia Friendly Community Facebook groups, hmm. um, and they um, you can find a session near you. There's a there's a sort of section to find a, a session, or you can request a session. Um, so Dementia Friends ambassad- ambassadors uh, like me, all over the country will look at that and they will um they can say yes i can help i can run that session it can be at a workplace it can be in a community center it can just be a group of people coming together 
wanting to do it. It's completely free. Um, so, and, and it. And Matt, just to ask if let's say somebody wasn't confident with you were saying, um, you know, laptops and the internet and all of that. Yeah. Your phone number is there another way that they could find out about how to attend one of these events? I think what no. Yes, absolutely. So Dementia Friends is is run through the um, Alzheimer's Society, the charity. So they're the sort of the the organisation who who looks after Dementia Friends. So it'd be through them. And I don't know the phone number off the top of my head, but uh, we can certainly uh, find it. Yeah, if you could find it out, I would start to put that the information with this. Yes. Because that's the thing, look, we're learning as we're going on. And and it's so easy to kind of think with so much is online. Yeah. Normally it's very easy. Well, actually, what about the people that, that aren't comfortable going online? And it, yeah. it's more than it's all in close up. It's very useful as well to know that you can attend a dementia friend and your friend's session as much as you want, actually. Because yes. I did one many years ago, Matt, and I have to be honest, just probably two or three main things I remember. Well, a lot of us, I don't. And I think yeah. and hope that other people will relate to that, that we mean well, but over the years, that sometimes we forget that training. Absolutely. Yeah, it's we. I do them here at the Garrick for our staff perhaps once a year, a couple of times yeah. a year. And it's mainly for new starters on our customer service team. But they, um, we will have people who come every year just because they want to keep that, that fresh. Uh, but it's a really simple session in that it's you get five key messages um about um about dementia awareness but the main message is um awareness you know positivity um it's it's not we want society to be society to be more aware of what it's like for a person living with dementia so it's not seen as such a negative um negative uh attitude to it one of the five key messages is it is possible to live well with dementia. That's yeah. that's sort of the 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 whole message, really. Yeah, and that reminds me. I remember seeing something where somebody was talking about living with dementia. Yes, in the whole language that we use, that somebody is living with, not to not to just suffering from, not absolutely defined by dementia or Alzheimer's. You know that yeah. not to define who they are. It's somebody who is living with. With it. Yes, that's one of the other five key messages, Sheila. There is more to the person. So you remember more than you remember. I'll take that. I'll take that, man. Thank you. Do you know what? All of a sudden, I feel like I'm back in school. Do I just point staff for that, Matt? Don't... No, but if you attend a dementia friend session, you do get a little pin badge. So it's a bit, a bit like a gold star. So go on. What else do we need to know? If let's say, look, we all mean when we yeah. go, I, I'm sure most of us, especially less of want to attend one of these. That's not always possible. What do we need to be aware of when it comes to dementia from your own point of view? Um, I think it's very much as we just said, it's it's the person. Um, it's not the condition. Yeah. Um, it's the the people around them, um, the carers, the family. Um it's it's not you know, they it if it, it affects it affects them as well. You don't know what they're they're sort of going through and also everybody with dementia is is living with it and experiencing with it in a very different way so it's not sort of a one size fits all um oh i i know i know you know i've got absolutely no clinical or expert training or knowledge in dementia it's all just a very social um social experience that i'm i'm talking about yeah um, and it's, it's a valid experience man like i said you know, you can learn so much about something, but until you actually experience it, it's yeah. different. And like the thing is for myself, having a private practice here in Town Watch, um, I have seen lots of people who live with dementia and it brings up so much for them. Like initially, it can instill so much fear for that person. That kind of unknown, is this the end? How long is it going to be? It can bring up so much. And almost like, I've seen it for some people, it's like to go through the seven stages of loss themselves, mm-hmm. where they can go into denial, where they almost don't want to admit it, they don't want to see it, they don't want to know. And sometimes if that's where somebody is at, that's where they're at, actually. I think yeah. it's really important to respect people where they're at. And now, obviously, if they're very unsafe and it's causing other people to be unsafe, 
then there needs to be something else, a different approach. And yeah. so initially, because it does take time and there's different stages to dementia. So it can take a person a long time to get their head around it. And so it is important, as you say, to think about the person themselves and also thinking about their family and friends that are not forcing them to face up to it. And I, I, I tell you something, Matt, but what struck me is that it must be very difficult when you have scenarios within a family when you've got, we'll say, like an elderly parent who is getting more forgetful to a point where it's, it's becoming a concern. But then we'll say the elderly parent doesn't want to go to the doctor. Like you could have, you know, the daughter, son saying, oh, oh, mom or dad, you know, shall we just go to the doctor and get this checked out? And they're like, oh, no, no, no. It's like, how would you get along with that one? Yes, it's it's a tricky one, and, and that's where places like the Alzheimer's Society and and Dementia UK and other charities are are there for advice. Um, they can they can um, uh, if I'm uh, I may may have to check this, but they can refer um, to memory services um, or the GP. Um, and one thing I will say, you know, is in recent in the last six weeks, my dad has now had a, a diagnosis with Alzheimer's. Um, so, and I can genuinely say that my um, volunteering as a dementia ambassador, um, delivering dementia friendly sessions, being part of the dementia friendly community network, working with um, on, on our dementia friendly events at the Garrick, that has really helped me with that. that in that, what way, Mash? In what way? I mean, John, I, I accepted it in that. Okay, that's. I mean, we 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 knew we expected it. It wasn't yeah. a surprise. Obviously, it's been, um, it was a little bit of a relief. It's like, okay, we now have this this diagnosis that, yeah. that we can that we can work with and move forward. Um, my mum, you know, she she's okay. I talked to my mum about it. You know, so we we've just t- kind of taken it in our stride because yeah. we know that that's that it's we he can live well with dementia. We I know. Or, or the, I have a much more positive attitude of it, thanks to the the experience I've had through dementia fans. So, so it's it's not been the sort of devastating yeah. um, blow to 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 our family that it could have been if I did have that awareness. Uh, and Matt, if you don't mind me asking, how was your dad? But was he willing to go to the doctor about it? Did that take a bit of time? How was your dad been about it? If a, I may ask him. Yeah, I, th- I think he's he's been he's been okay. He's just sort of taken it as I just need to I just need to go to the doctor about something. And yeah. luckily, you know, my mum is so experienced in in that in that area. She knew, and not only in that area, but she's experienced with my dad. You know, they've been married for over forty years. <laughs> she knows. <laughs> I've experienced. <laughs> she knows how he ticked. So, um, so, yeah, I think it was just sort of quite a natural. Okay, there's there's something something wrong. Uh, but he is, as as I've said, he is just one person. Not everybody is in that situation. Other people will be will be more reluctant or or scared. Um, but you know, it's we really want to remove that stigma um, through dementia friends that that so so people will not they will go okay. I'll go to I'll go to the doctor because I know that although this this is this is a serious condition that yeah. I, it is not it's not. Okay, that's it now. I've I've just got to stay indoors and not do anything, and and my life's going to be terrible from now on. No, it really isn't about absolutely. And do you know what, matter? What I'm hearing here is that with your own family, you recognise that your mom as a mental health nurse that there's going to be a certain amount of openness to health, if you like, uh, in your own family. That not everybody has that. While actually, what you're saying is that the Alzheimer's Society they they can you know help. They can give advice. Especially if people, family members don't know how to approach it with another family member. Because I often find that sometimes with any condition or illness, often the, the initial issue is when people don't know much about it. Again. It's almost like the fear of it sometimes is bigger than the actual it. Yes. Like when we learn about it, when we ask other people, you know, people can go to the garage now as we know, they can chat to other people. And all of a sudden, you, people don't feel so alone. It doesn't feel so daunting. So I think what I would encourage anybody that's listening to this, 
that is where you might be at the start of that, whether it's a family member or themselves, is not to be alone with this. Do you know what I mean? That they, they can get involved in places like the Garrick, you know, that they can call up the Alzheimer's Society. Yeah, there's the Memory Cafe. Memory cafe um, yeah. um, there's, there's a lot of different... Um, Organisations run memory cafes all over the place. There's, there's one in Litchfield um, yeah. and Tamworth. It's Home Instead. It's a company that run both of them in in Litchfield and Tamworth. Um, there's uh, even places like um, Places of Welcome, which is um, a sort of national national network that the Garrick have just joined. Where it's just a, it's basically like a free coffee morning, but it's it's awesome. it's anyone can go and it's it's a welcoming environment, and you can just go and chat. And there's volunteers there to chat to. Um, so, for example, if you came to the one to the Garrick and you and you were a little bit worried about something like yeah. um, I'm having problems with my memory or something like that, our volunteers they're not they're not trained in that they they're just trained to listen. They I say trained they're just there to listen. But they can yeah. say to me or another staff member, oh, I'm a bit concerned about this person. We can signpost them to the Dementia UK, the Alzheimer's Society, the memory cafes. Um, so there's, there's, if it's just knowing where to look, I think that's the. It can feel very daunting if if you don't know. Yeah, findings. that's exactly it, Mash. You know that that initially it can feel so daunting, and that connecting with people, that connection and care together mm. is massive. And it's interesting, like you know, when I when I was kind of prepping for this call today, I was in my local Costa in Tamworth, and I was so delighted to see open a notice board and I'll just bring this up here on my phone. Um music and friendship, time to sing, dementia requirement. Fan yeah, there's there's loads of great things coming up now. Um, I think uh, the act actress Vicky McClaw, she she did the um dementia choir in Nottingham where she's from and there was on the T V. So I think there's lots of ones sort of um uh, being that's inspired lots of things. But there was already quite a lot of things like love to move and, and chair exercise and singing for the brain. Um, yes. they, these these organisations are all out there doing great great work with people living with dementia. Um, but as I say, it's just knowing where they are and and, and what they what they're doing. But the the Alzheimer's Society is a great first port of call, I'd say, mm -hmm. to find to find that out. Yeah, that's so good to know. And ask Ben who we sort out this video if he can push in a link for that. Yes, I can. Ben. Any links that we have, Jeremy? Uh, any links to the Garrick and stuff like that, of course, we will we'll put that in there. Living with dementia, like from, from your own experience and just, of course, with your aunt, because I was curious, kind of going back to your aunt, that, uh, you know, did you see much of her journey, if you like? Did you see what was helpful, what was maybe unhelpful? I'm just curious about kind of your aunt's story and living with dementia is where to take from that. Yes, um, I was quite close to my auntie because she um, didn't have any children, um, and so so sort of growing up, we'd see a lot of her, and, and I think she sort of took me under under her wing a bit. Um, uh, but she was, uh, I'd say, her experience. She lived she lived alone. Her husband, my uncle, died in yeah. two thousand and eight, I think it was. So she was on her own for for quite a while. Um, she had neighbours looking in on her, and my mom and dad, and my dad's other brother. You know, the three of them would would right. looking on look, looking on her. Um, I think my experience of of my interactions with her was always, let's try and laugh, let's just try and talk. Um, she loved to sing. I mean, I remember when she was in in one of the, I think it was in the the first care home she was in. I went to see her, and and the nurse said to me. There's nothing she doesn't know, is there? As in the songs, she would be always singing something. Um, oh, no. uh, but that's her aunt's name. I feel I I want to give her a mention. What's your aunt's name? Gladys, Auntie Gladys. Yeah. Oh, Auntie Gladys. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah. So she knew a lot then. She knew she she loved she loved to sing. She was her her face was quite important to her. She was um um she would go to church at um. Uh, in right and over from where she lived, so it was yeah. important that she still kept going to church um and um, mass can i just ask so that going to church was very important at Gladys. did it get to a stage where she wasn't able to take herself and somebody else would take her I, th I think by that stage she was going to um she would she that's the point where she was going into um uh, uh she had spell in hospital and then in in care but uh in the care home but i think from uh, to my knowledge she was going 
well, it, it, the, the problem was in the end, she didn't really know what day it was. So yeah, I remember, where, I remember once I went round and she wasn't there and she was meant to be and she'd gone to church. It was a Monday, but she'd seen the Sunday newspaper on the side and seen Sunday yes. gone over. I mean, she was fine. She came back. She said she'd been and had a cup of tea. I mean, she was, she was great. We, I always look oh, back okay. in, in very positively, you know, she was, um, yeah. she, the, the big thing for her was cats, which I have sort of inherited. It's quite worrying. And I love cats. Is that a troll? But if she, she would, she would sort of kidnap the neighborhood cats without realizing she didn't mean to. But she'd she'd um, she'd sort them in the house, and they'd be meowing to go out. So she'd feed them like lasagna and things that were meant for her. Uh, hold on, I do not have a call in from the RSP. It's they were fine. They were fine. They always fine. They were quite happy. Um, but the you know we do. And there's one story that I always tell that she, my mum got a phone call from one of the neighbours saying, "Oh, there's something wrong with Gladys. She's not she's not well." Um. She she's all red faced and she's slurring her words and she's she's not very happy. And so anyway, my mum got round and it's a good sort of 15, 20 minute drive between the houses. And um she got there and everybody was there, people from the church, neighbours, blah, 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 all crowded around. What sort of glad if something had gone wrong? And she sat there going, Oh, I can't go on, I can't go on. And my mum thinks, Oh God, this is serious. And then anyway, they find a bottle of Bailey's empty next to it. I like her style. No, she just, I mean, good for her. She managed to drink a whole bottle of Bailey's and not fall asleep. I think that was quite impressed with that. You made me glad us about taking, I just have one. And then, yes, exactly. That is exactly what happened. I do. That is what happened. Just one, one bottle there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So I think, good. You know, that is something I think, yes, it, there were some hard times and there were some difficult times. But I always think of the, the things that were, that's, that was my way of, of sort of, of, of those great Dean wishes, absolutely. Uh, I can hear that, Matt, you know, and if you were you're so important with that, that we're not laughing about somebody, we're laughing no, not at all. somebody and the yeah. situation as a way of coping. Uh, and it's interesting about that transition into a care home that mm -hmm. um, with clients I've had that have partners with dementia, it's a massive issue for them. Because as we know with dementia, that there is a certain amount of time where somebody can live independently on their own with dementia. So maybe some things need to be put in place to make sure that they're safe and people checking in and stuff like that. But in the initial state, we know that people can live independently with dementia. Then we know then go through the different stages that, that it gets to the stage where they do need that full-time care, where it's becoming unsafe for them. And they guilt and the conflict and that people have over this, especially like your married couples would have done with the same. But I said, you know, in sickness and in health and, and sometimes you're afraid that the partner is so tired and worn out but caring mm. for the for their partner that it's almost looking like that the partner who's meant to be the healthy one looks like they're gonna go before yeah. the person with dementia. And it is, it's kind of like that, like I can imagine, or maybe some people listening to this that find that transition really difficult, but there's two things I would offer them to think about, that if somebody is in a situation where um, the, the husband or the wife is at a stage where they need to go into a care home, you know, the first thing is you have to think about what is best for them, actually, mm -hmm. because most people are not professional nurses, do you know what I mean? or socialize in dementia care. And so as much as you may love that person, you may not be able to give them the special care that they need. So effectively, if you keep caring for them, it's not really in their best benefit, if you know what I mean, Matt. Now, obviously, every situation is different. So the person you're caring for might say, look, you know, within, when they are in capacity, they're thinking, no, I don't want anybody else. And if that suits, fair enough. But in, so, in some situations, in both people are getting ill, you know, more ill, do you know what I mean, because of this scenario. And the thing is, as well as that, uh, uh, what I would offer is when it's something I use a lot in my own practice. I, I'm sure there is some fancy term for it when I call it very simply the flip technique. And I yeah. need people to flip it around. If it was the odd way around, what would you want? Yeah. I know in my situation, you know, I hope I never get to mention, but if I do, 
that with my partner, if it's dragging him down, if he's getting ill with all of that, if it's getting to, to a place where I need that professional care, I wouldn't want him to keep looking after me. I, I would want him to be happy. I'd like yes. to get brisk away now and again, Matt. So it's a small guitar and I'll be playing some tunes in the care home at book. Do you know what I mean? So those two do because you know how hard it can be, Matt. And, and yeah. I suppose we're highlighting the lightness of it, but it's important to highlight the darkness of it too. But what we can do and sort of we don't need to be carrying guilt and pressure and, and a sense of jealousy. So that we've got to look at what's best for everybody in this situation. Matt, thank you very much. And no doubt we'll see you soon at the gallery. Absolutely, yes. See you again. Okay, cheers. Thank you. Bye then. Bye. Thank you for watching Councillor Convos with Sheila McMahon. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel.